Hello everyone and thanks for joining. You're looking at my uh, next project here. It's a little Montgomery Warding Company radio branded as a airline. It's a model 62306. It's got the uh, really cool teledial. And I'm not going to rotate this anymore. The uh, tuning condenser seems to be uh, somewhat seized up. We'll look at that closer in just a moment. The uh, schematic shows the uh, radio dated back to uh, maybe around June of 37. It's in Writers, Volume 10, page 9, if you guys want to follow along. Looking at the serial number on this particular uh, radio, I'm Issue A. So I'm one of the early generations. It was an Issue B as well. Six tubes, the 6 Alpha 8 G oscillator and first detector, then there's a 6K7 G IF amp, a 6Q7 G acting as the second detector, AVC and first audio, and a 6F6 power output tube. The rectifier tube is a 5Y3, and uh, it has the uh, cool tuning indicator here, or better known as the uh, green eye, using a 6G5. The uh, power transformer itself was the uh, designed for 115 volts AC, so we'll look at that, make sure our voltages are in line, or uh, take some steps to mitigate that just to make sure that we're safe to operate this on modern day voltage. It's a, a two-band receiver. This is the band select, which seems kind of odd when I turn it. But uh, it covers 535 to 1720 kilocycles on the broadcast or AM band. The short wave band is uh, 2000 to 7000 kilocycles, or better known as 2 megahertz to 7 megahertz for the uh, short wave band. The IF frequency is 465 kilocycles. This uh, teledial, really, really interesting. This thing really took off, drew a lot of attention. I'm sure it really helped on the sales of radio. Looks like an old rotary telephone dial, for those that remember those. Um, I'm not sure if this is completely manual tuning or if I have some slots. You can see I've got uh, 15 different uh, locations here, callouts for station identification. There's only one of the old uh, logos here, and it references uh, WPTF down in uh, Raleigh. Uh, Grunel, I think, was one of the first ones to actually name this. Uh, teledial. So um, it's a really unique looking design. This appears to be made out of a, a Bakelite material. It's still in really good shape, which is kind of unusual. Looks like I have the original knobs, less the uh, center tuning knob. So both of these have to do with the tuning volume control on and off. And again, I mentioned the uh, band selector switch here. It's a big cabinet that you can see based on the uh, size here and the weight. So it's a little over 18 inches wide, about uh, nine and three quarter inches high, and at least eight and a half inches deep. And uh, I haven't weighed it yet, but it's probably just under 20 pounds. Now, looking at the cabinet here just a little bit closer, it appears that the cabinet uh, may have the original finish, but had been touched up as well. Um, you can see here we've got two different types of veneer if the lighting is showing up. This is a little bit lighter, a little darker. Um, some are saying I think the left side or the curved side may be a, more of a, a black mahogany. And uh, this side being walnut or maybe it's mahogany as well. We'll take a closer look at that. I probably won't do anything to the uh, cabinet itself until uh, spring we get some warm weather then uh, I'll decide if I just want to touch this up or uh, maybe strip it and try to refinish it to get it back to what it should look like uh, for that particular period but uh, very very interesting here it's got the original grill cloth none of the uh, grill bars here are compromised as well which is uh, really cool let me spin this thing around here. We'll take a look at the uh, chassis here real quick, and then uh, we'll pull it out here for the first time as well. See what this thing looks like underneath. As I alluded to just a moment ago, you know, the cabinet itself looks to be in rather good shape. And here's where I was talking about. Looks like some, maybe some additional finish had been put on. Plus, I see some other locations here on the top where somebody had rubbed another uh, finishing type of uh, solution on the uh, cabinet. 
it's extremely rusty and I'm not sure what the top side's going to look like once we remove all the uh, dust and debris here. Uh, but much uh, surface rust here on the back side. A lot of other examples in addition to the RMA sticker that you'll see here. There's a small diagram here that shows the uh, tube layout. And uh, you can see I've got a mix uh, match of uh, tubes in here. So definitely someone has serviced the radio at some point in time. The uh, model number appears here at this location. And uh, you can see the uh, old line cord has had uh, better days. So all this will be uh, replaced as well. Anyway, let me uh, grab a uh, socket wrench screwdriver or see how this thing is mounted here to the cabinet. Get the knobs off and uh, pull it out here. We'll take a closer look here at the top side of the chassis and then we'll flip it over together for the first time and see what's uh, underneath this rascal. Alright, let's see if we can uh, pull this out now. I've got the knobs off, got the four fasteners off the bottom here. And there is a plug for the speaker, which is uh, really nice and convenient. So it looks like I'm going to have to uh, get that green eye out as well as the uh, speaker here in just a moment. But uh, there's the first look at the uh, chassis here. Yeah, something else here I just discovered. It's pretty uh, neat. The original wire antenna wound up here on the uh, wire holder. It was uh, back in the back or the front side of the chassis, I should say. There's the other lead there. That's where the wire antenna connected to. I'll just leave a, a little bit of that on there just for uh, reference for now. And uh, the other lead, my guess would be the ground connection itself. Let me see if I can get underneath this uh, plug here without creating any damage here. Okay, there we have it. Okay, that appears to be the original uh, green eye tube. Be interesting to see if it uh, still works or functions. The uh, 6G5, and you can see the uh, Ward, which I'm uh, assuming is a Ward's airline tube. We'll look at that closer in just a bit. All right, here's a uh, closer look here at the chassis itself. I've got a couple different angles here, one from uh, the uh, top side down and the other angled view here. So uh, you can see the uh, all the dust and everything on the uh, chassis itself. I think I'll take the vacuum here and uh, try to clean this off instead of blowing all this uh, crud around in my uh, workshop here on this uh, cold day. I want to be extremely uh, cautious here around the uh, teledial and uh, probably look to remove it. I don't want to lay this thing over and uh, take a chance of uh, cracking or uh, breaking the uh, teledial itself. So I'll look at it in just a moment. But uh, I think I can safely uh, flip this thing over. I'll hold it in my hand and uh, we'll take a glance underneath and I'll come back and try to get the teledial off, get these uh, tubes out, and uh, I'll do some documentation here of what's uh, in what socket just for future reference and then uh, we'll talk about next steps for the restoration itself. Before I flip this thing over here, let me take one more look here at this uh, teledial. Yeah, I'm not going to try to force the issue. It seems to be, uh, I've got some movement right in here. 
that uh, then it's uh, seized up from that point um, forward. You may be able to see this. I'm not really sure between both camera views possibly here, but there's uh, two dial lamps or pilot lamps here, one on the bottom side and then one mounted up here on the uh, top side, of course on the back side of the uh, teledial. Looking at the teledial just a little bit closer, it looks like it's just uh, pushed on. Probably to like a ribbed connection point or something on the uh, spindle of the uh, tuning condenser. I don't see any fasteners, so uh, it makes me a little nervous about trying to pry this thing off and hopefully it doesn't uh, crack and go into a million pieces. Let me get these uh, dial lamps out of the way first and uh, get back in here and take a closer look at this and just see if I can wiggle it loose. Okay, I was looking at this closer here. I think I can get back in here and uh, pry this off. There looks like there's maybe a metal ring on the back side here of the uh, teledial. So I'm going to just real gently as I can to see if I can apply some pressure here. And uh, hopefully nothing pops. See if I can get this off. Alright, let me get something just a little wider here and continue to uh, leverage between these points instead of pulling on the uh, teledial itself and see if I can get this the rest of the way off. That makes me uh, feel better. Get this thing off here without it uh, coming to a million pieces there. It's on there uh, rather tight there on the uh, spindle as you can see. All right, uh, very cool. Very simple uh, radio from the uh, underneath side. A lot of real estate here across the uh, top side of the chassis, but uh, man, wide open here underneath. And uh, for the most part, maybe original uh, caps with the exception of a few So uh, here's what I'm thinking I'm going to uh, do. I'll go ahead and take the uh, tubes out in the next uh, video. I'll document uh, what we have in each uh, tube socket. Take a closer look here at the uh, tuning condenser. Get all this uh, dust and dirt grime here off the uh, top side of the chassis. I'll do that uh, off camera. Then uh, we'll start doing some testing. I'll grab that uh, speaker and uh, fuel coil. Probably get it out of the cabinet as well. We'll do some testing on it to make sure the uh, fill coil, output transformer, voice coil are in good shape. Then uh, we'll start looking at the uh, second IF filter, first IF filter, the antenna coil, the oscillator coil. Uh, we'll, we'll do a quick uh, check on that candome resistor as well. And then uh, we'll start checking these, uh, the on-off switch here as well as the uh, volume control. Get a better understanding of how the uh, band um, selection switch here, what kind of condition it's in. And uh, we'll do some tube testing as well and uh, look at the overall condition of the chassis to see if it's uh, worth uh, painting, doing a little de-rusting, or just leave it as is. So folks, thanks for watching the uh, first video here, kind of the kickoff on the uh, 62306 Wards Airline from, uh, we'll call it 1937-1938 period the uh, teledial radio.